Hey everyone, it's Don from Crux Terminatus and this is one of the craziest videos I've ever attempted to do. I was painting 14 Imperial Fist tanks in under four weeks. So how do we get there? Now, I, like everybody else, love Forge World tanks. Love them to bits, love the design. But unfortunately, I can't afford to buy one of every type. So we've got some 3D printed proxies. And I primed them all with cheap Poundland primer and I used my Poundland epoxy to put them together. I had to do some filling but nothing more than a normal Forge World model. Okay so this is where the fun begins. I'm using three paints from P3, Cador Red Highlight, Heartfire and Cygnus Yellow. They're going to be the three colours that I use for all the main bodies of the tanks. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I thin that down really well and blast all the tanks with my airbrush. Key to this part is to make sure that you get all the faces, including all the sort of hidden nooks and crannies with the base coat, because that's going to allow us to have a sort of free shadow colour highlight, or low light I guess, uh, when we're painting. Then we go on to the mid colour, which is the heart fire. And I'm just kind of trying to leave some of that sort of orangey colour in the sort of recesses just so I can get that sort of shadow effect. Nice thin coats, taking your time. I've got 14 to go through, so it takes a while. The key here is to get some good coverage without covering all of the orange hidden away in the steps or the recesses. So it's about taking your time, leaving it to the side and coming back and doing another thin coat if you need to. Sometimes you just don't need to. It really depends on how thorough you are with your first attempt. I think a good example of this is this turret of this uh, tank. Um, I'm leaving the panel lines as orange as I can, whilst still ensuring I get a good yellow coverage. And I just decided to put that turret on a little tank to make my own variant. Beep beep! Okay, so we're now into the highlight stage, which is the Cygnus Yellow, and you can see that tank at the bottom has already been highlighted, and I'm going to start my second tank, and... Well, excuse me a second while I take out my frustration. Okay, so we're back to business with another attempt. The money in the swear jar is probably overflowing at this point. The key here is to hit the middle of the panels and try and stay away from the edges of all the panel lines. The reason we're doing that is so we still get our definition from the other two colours that we've used, which was the Cador Red Highlight and Heartfire. Taking your time is absolutely critical here. Nice, really thin coats. And as you can see, just on this last couple of minutes, it's starting to really come out, it's starting to really pop. But I'm not going crazy by spraying it too heavy, it's just nice thin coats. Okay, one down, 13 more to go. Let's do this. So it's more or less just keeping one as a reference close, close at hand, so you can compare, so you don't go too heavy or too light. So I'm just having a good look there to understand exactly how yellow, how bright yellow I want that to be. So on to another one. You do get quicker as you go. You kind of learn where you need to put the, the sort of main highlights uh, with the yellow and you can sort of learn to get your airbrush up to speed as long as you keep the paint consistency uh, the same. So that's us nearly done with the main armour colour. Here's a quick 30 second recap of how that colour is achieved. The first thing I'm going to do is give a really good coat of Kador Red Highlight. So I'm going to make sure I get all the angles and they're all covered. The next thing I'm going to do is come in with a highlight of Heartfire, leaving some of the orangey colour in the recesses. And the last thing I'm going to do is come in with Cygnus Yellow and give it a really good highlight leaving some of the oranges behind. And that's it. Nice and simple Imperial Fists yellow. Okay, let's go on. So now we're going to have a look at blocking in some of the other colours. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to block in 
the black panels. I think Imperial Fist tanks look great with black inserts. So these models are very fortunate that they have very distinct panels. So I'm going to do them just with black, just plain black paint there. And I'm going to try and be very careful not to get any on the yellow. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the exhausts. Now, I paint the exhausts black with this brush, which is a mistake because I miss all the holes. So I go in with a, just a bog standard brush and I basically colour in all the holes that I've missed. And once that's done, I'm going to come back and paint them with a sort of rusty colour because if you've ever worn the Ford Fiesta, you'll know the exhausts are rusty. So I'm going to paint the tracks now. I use track primer paint to do this. Yes, you do have to be a little bit careful when you're painting without masking, but with this challenge, I didn't have the time to sit there and mask everything. So it's just about airbrush control. And you'll see that I'm moving the tank around quite a lot and that's to make sure I get into all the sort of links uh, because the the model has been painted yellow so the paint from that goes into the links and if you miss it with the primer it sticks out like a sore thumb. Just be sure to make sure you get underneath the tracks um, so you cover all your bases. In a similar vein I'm going to use a rust colour primer to give the exhausts um, a, a sort of overspray I, I did try and mask it with my fingers at the start, but then you kind of get used to where it's going to go and you can be a bit more slapdash. I also decided to paint a line down the middle of the tracks. This kind of breaks up that colour and it gives it something more visual interest. Uh, it looks pretty cool when it's done. Okay, so chipping and weathering. This is without a doubt my most favourite part of any tank build. So I'm spraying the black just with a light grade to break up the panel and sort of highlight it a little bit. And now I'm going to use that same rust paint just really lightly over these little vents uh, to, to denote sort of smoke or general oils and stuff. And then I'm going to use it in these uh, steps up to the top of the, the vehicle just to make them look a little bit dirty and to give it some sort of contrast against all these big yellow areas. Just a nice subtle effect, but it's really cool. So now I've taken some of the Cygnus yellow and mixed it in with some white to give me a highlight colour to do my scratches. I add a little bit more white because it's still too yellow and I think that's going to contrast really, really nicely. You're going to see that uh, against the model. So first things first, I'm going to get a sponge and do some sponge chipping, trying to focus on the areas that you know, would get sort of worn down, like the hatches and the doors and any sort of sharp corners on the vehicle, especially at the front where it's been barging into things, heretics probably. Um, I don't go crazy with this because I do like doing scratches with brushes as well. And if you overdo this, um, it, it kind of looks odd. So less is more. Now's the fun stuff. I love painting on scratches and stuff like this. Um, keep your brush moving, keep it really quick. Although this is sped up, it's actually not sped up that much. I really you know, go quickly when I'm doing scratches. The more you think about it, the sort of more robotic it looks. Uh, so I like to be really random, just like me in real life, and, you know, cover as much as you dare, but less is probably more when it comes to scratches on tanks. One of the things I really like doing is like dotted lines, uh, like it's, you know, had been brushed against something really brutal or it's had a ricochet off a bullet or something. I love doing dots that dotted lines that get smaller as they move away and it looks really great when you fill that in with a little bit of uh, German camo black brown which is the the color I'm going to use in a minute but just keep your brush moving and as I say try and avoid the temptation to do millions of scratches I think that's quite heavy on the on the scratches but I also like it looking like a burst up JCB or digger or whatever you want to call it so here I'm going into those scratches that I've just created with a little speck of German camel black brown. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. And it just makes it look like, you know, there's been layers to that paint that you've you've lost by bullets. That's the dotted lines. I really think these are great, especially against bright colours. I think they look brilliant. So I love doing these. So excuse me while I indulge my favourite pastime of colouring and scratches. Obviously the choice to do 
too much or too little is entirely up to you. I tend to focus on bits of the vehicle that I know if they're sort of facing an enemy, they're probably going to get the worst. So most of the scratching is at the front and the sides, especially if there's doors or hatches. But they're your tanks, you decide what's right for you. So now that that's done, I'm going in with a sponge. I'm just doing very light sponge chipping with that same German camo black brown. And really, it's a very subtle effect, but it does help break up the large areas of yellow, which I think sometimes can be a problem when you're doing like bright coloured vehicles. So here's a comparison to similar uh, tank chassis, one weathered and chipped and dinged and the other one uh, still to be done. So that's what it looks like. I'm quite happy with that. And we'll move on. So if you can imagine me doing that another 12 times or however many times I had to do it, the last thing we want to do at this point is put on a gloss varnish. Now, I used two coats of gloss varnish and yes, it does make the tank look really crazy, but it's going to help us with the next stage and it's going to protect everything that we've done up until this point. So now we've got that protected, it's time to do the lenses and viewports. So the lenses and viewports for these tanks were a bit of a problem. I couldn't really decide, you know, was it going to be blue? Was it going to be green? Was it red? I asked lots of friends for help. So thanks to Robert and thanks to Spike for, and hundreds of other people as well, for pointing me in the direction of red. So to get my red, I used uh, gory red, that is, and I just painted it in over the black. And the first couple of coats don't do much. But then I started to build up to the corner that I wanted to be the brightest. So I'm sort of leaving, I'm drawing the paint to the wards, the corner that I want to be the brightest. And just it, where your paintbrush leaves last, it leaves a big blob. So I'm moving to there. You can see that's a good example of that. So I'm starting on the left, moving to the right. And it gives me that sort of effect. And now I'm going to highlight it with a sort of peachy colour that I kind of mix together. Although, to be honest... It wasn't great, but um, I tried a couple of different ones and it seemed to work okay. And then I put some white in the corner. And my goal here is to lay a foundation that when I put a really thin red layer on, uh, just here, it kind of makes a sort of orangey glow colour. So that's kind of what I was going for. You know, there must be 200 lenses uh, on this project. Uh, you know, I'll take that. It's it's a quick, effective way of doing it. So I'm just using sort of a, a sort of transparent paint almost to give it a kind of wash consistency. It's not great. It's not bad. It's okay. And, you know, that'll do donkey. That'll do is, you know, the watchword for this whole project. Now we're on to the decals and transfers. So blue microset is going to be our friend here and I trimmed the decals as close as I could with a pair of scissors because trying to do it with a scalpel blade with circles is very difficult so I'm just letting that soak in microset and placing it in and then I dry it off with a cotton bud or q-tip depending on where you are in the world and I added in the imperial fist logo and the seventh legion uh, Roman numerals and I tried to be consistent with all the different variants of the Sabre platform. Um, some of them don't have that front panel so I put them on the sort of roof and then I sealed the decals in with gloss varnish. Got our gloss varnish on we can mix up uh, oil wash of, sort of burnt umber and we can use that to do all of the washing in terms of all the rivets and all the vents and all the rest of it it's a very therapeutic process i highly recommend it if you've had a rough day at work and i've put in a couple of, sort of drip lines and stuff uh, on some of them but not all of them but it's 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 something very therapeutic to do and it looks great when it's dried in so now i need to do all the sort of other incidental details like the bolt gun metal barrels and magazines and just other little tiny details that I didn't do up until this point. The reason for that is if I was doing sponge chipping and I'd already painted them, then it would be um, it'd get covered up with the sponge chipping. So now I need to take the shine off with some matte varnish. So I give it two nice 
thin coats of matte varnish to take that shine away. And then because I've done that, I need to go in with gloss varnish again and paint the viewports. I know this sounds like a lot of faff, but it's worth it. And they, they make them look like reflective glass. So it's really well worth the extra couple of minutes to do that. Now, some of you may have worked out that you've not seen any weapons yet. And let me tell you why. It's because they're still in this box. So in order to do the weapons, I decided I would keep the palette nice and simple, really straightforward, effective, but simple. So I'm going to do that by painting them with a bolt gun metal or lead belcher, or whatever they call it these days. And as I say, I'm going to keep the palette very simple. The panels I'm going to paint black and then I'm going to highlight them with that same grey that I've used previously. And this will break up the mass of yellow armour. I think they look really, really good as accent panels. So here's the highlights. Nothing complicated. And I'm going to edge highlight the black with the same grey paint, just not through the airbrush with a old-fashioned hairy stick. So that's some super fast edge highlighting as i say i'm not this project was all about achieving something in a realistic period of time these are not golden demon entries these are to get them on the tabletop and hopefully you'll agree that they're tabletop standard so i'm just basically using the same sort of palette colors i use retributor armor on top of the uh, bolt gun metal for all the sort of trims and then i paint the missiles um, or they're rockets, aren't they? Not missiles. I paint the rockets black and then give them a little yellow sort of nose cone type dot of paint just to break up the black, basically. And we're getting close to the end. So time to get your liquid talent out, or non-loyal, as some people call it. And I think these colours just work well. They're simple and they're quite effective. So I give all the weapons uh, a generous coating of the non-loyal. Uh, just to make sure that it doesn't you know, go crazy when it's pulling. But sometimes a little bit round rivets and things like that is actually pretty cool. Okay, so I know I might be about to upset some people here. These are not plasma weapons. These are Volkite weapons. I understand that. But I still haven't really found a, you know, an official definition of what colour Volkite weapons are. So I decided to paint them with sort of green coils or fins or whatever you want to call that. They're not glowing like I usually do with plasma. But I acknowledge that it could be um, error on my part. And now it's just really a case of assembling everything with some more epoxy resin, gluing in all the different barrels and all the different weapon systems into the chassis. And you'll be glad to know that that's pretty much the end of the project. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you each of the vehicles in turn. So the project was, can I paint these 14 different tanks in a short space of time and I think I've done that I think I've appreciated that so let's start off with this one it's the uh, armored personnel carrier variant again these are all apart from the last tank which is a, a, a 3d print from a friend of mine who just made it up himself this is the armored personnel variant so it's got side doors and no other uh, weapon systems uh, to speak of but I think the chipping looks good. I think the contrast looks good. And it certainly looks like it's put a shift in uh, on the last wall. Okay, so that was the armor personnel variant. This is the command variant. So um, same kind of chassis, but this one has a turret on top with a radar dish or scanner or whatever you want to call that. This one, um, the... The scanner cupola or whatever you turret, whatever you want to call it, is actually slightly too big. So if you're printing this one off, just make sure that it fits in between the hatches. But other than that, do you know what? It's pointing up a little bit. I can live with that. And I think it looks pretty cool with the green uh, lens uh, for tracking targets. So that's vehicle number two. Vehicle number three is our multiple launch rocket variant, or one of them. This is a sort of fire and forget or stalin's organs or whatever you want to call it again really quite straightforward there's a bit of a misprint at the back but you're not going to be looking at the back you're going to be worrying about it firing towards you uh, so i'm quite happy with that one so this is vehicle number three 
and hopefully you can see the difference that rust uh, on the tracks makes i think it, it it breaks up the tracks quite nicely and gives it a bit more visual interest okay vehicle number four the cool looking or the upgraded version of the multiple launch uh, rocket system here really like this one it's really cool it's a very sort of horace heresy aesthetic from the old sort of rocket launchers uh, back in the day back when i first started with warhammer again nice and simple there's some great highlights on the launchers themselves and just some grey uh, edge highlighting and I think that makes it look pretty sweet. So that was vehicle number four. Let's have a look at vehicle number five now. So vehicle number five is some kind of massive siege mortar type thing. I always laugh if you know if that thing fired <laughs> how far back would that tank travel just the recoil uh, off that I think this is the first one that we've seen with the Volkite uh, on the roof, or roof-mounted Volkite. I think that should be a thing in all vehicles. I'd certainly like one on my car. Um, but again, you know, chonking big gun for when you've forgotten your front door keys and it's three o'clock in the morning and you really want to get in the house. So knock, knock, who's there, bang, crunch. Decal failure on that one, which is a, a shame. This one, uh, what's this, vehicle number six? I'll have to go and check, hold on. Yep, it's number six. So this one is the quad fire or thunder fire cannon. Again, I like this one because the um, black panels on the on the roof, like the sort of sections of the armor, uh, I think it looks really cool. It helps to break up that yellow. And there's another sort of quad barreled weapon system We'll see in a minute but this one is the the bigger variant of that so quite like it and i like the lenses on this one too vehicle number seven is the twin auto cannon variant this one has ammo hoppers uh, on the top on the roof so uh, that just makes sense again the, i think keeping the the color palette between all the weapons so similar has actually paid some dividends because the whole thing kind of looks really unified when you see them all uh, lined up which there's a a shot of just uh, at the end at the end of this video but yep yeah, uh, liking what i'm seeing so far i hope you do too and the next vehicle is vehicle number eight so let's have a look at that one that's some kind of laser destroyer maybe a tank destroyer or something like that there's a up gun version of this one as well which we'll come to in a minute but this one has some sort of like i don't know cooling thing on the roof uh, you guys in the comments can let me know what all the different variants are i'd love to print up little cards and have them sat beside them but um, as i say i'm just not close enough to it because i don't frequent the forge world book of dreams or website of dreams very often i, I can't afford it so number nine here we go cap pow uh, if you really want to smash someone in the face with a volkite um, this would be your uh, weapon of choice, I think. Twin Volkites, a big one and a wee one. I know I mentioned it earlier about plasmas and Volkites and what colour a Volkite weapon should be. Do you know what? I think the green um, throughout the whole of the range of tanks works quite well. And yeah, it's not glowing, so I'll, I'll give myself a pass uh, on that uh, with green Volkite weapons. I can live with it. So number 10... Now, this is a Titan killer or something similar. It's the much upgunned version of that sort of laser cannon type thing. I'm probably, you know, there's probably people watching this who are screaming at their screens. It's a such and such model, you idiot. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, please, please comment on the video and let me know uh, what number 10 is. In fact, if you could... If you don't mind uh, numbering them and telling me what they are, I'd love to to have that information. But a big chunky, I'll kill you from long range weapon system. Perfect. Love it. Right, number 11. Now, I know I've seen this before. Um, this one's got a cool little shield on the front. It's a laser destroyer. I think this one's called um, quad barreled sort of las gun type thing. Again, I'm pretty sure that would be pretty effective against enemy armor. Um, this one here has got big side panels 
the chipping looks good, but on the other one, it's got big side panels with no accents or no doors. I put like Crusader cross uh, tra uh, transfers or decals on just to break up that panel a little bit. You know, uh, which I had more of those decals. Okay, number 12, some kind of siege mortar thing. I don't know. Uh, let's think of a cool name for it. Um, is it practical to get out in the middle of a battle and load that thing? Shh, don't ask too many questions. You'll spoil it for everyone. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I like it. It's odd. It's different. Um, you know, weapons in 40k are the crazier the better. And, you know, they don't get much more crazy than that. But by way of an introduction, I think number 13 is probably the craziest of them all. Let's have you number 13. Let's go. And it is quite simply like an Earthshaker cannon <laughs> mounted on the roof of a Sabre platform. Hell yes. Let's have more of that. We need more crazy guns uh, in in Warhammer. That's what we need. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what you want. Um, a big crazy gun stuck on your roof. Um, again, if that fired, it would, it would probably destroy the vehicle firing it. But never mind. That's half the fun of uh, Warhammer miniatures. The crazier, the better. And physics doesn't really exist in the 40k uh, universe. So that leads us on to this last tank. Now, this is interesting because um, it doesn't exist. I mean, it's not a Forge World copy of anything or a proxy or anything like that. This is just a tank that one of my friends like designed and edited and changed and, you know, I think he did a great job, so shout out to you, Robert. Well played, mate. Um, and I just tried to make it fit in with the, the rest of them. It was a... It, I mean, I used the same techniques on this as I did with the all the Sabres. But, um, yeah, I quite like it. This one does have plasma, so I gave this one a little bit of a plasma glow. So that's the... You've seen them all individually. Let's have a look at my kitchen table and see how clean or not it is. Uh, in case you're thinking, oh, you've only painted two or three and you're just swapping the weapons out. No, I really, really am not doing that. Here is a list of uh, the whole sort of firing line, if you like, of all these uh, tanks. Are there things that I would do differently in the future if I had to do this project again? Absolutely, uh, I would do things. But I did learn some new tricks about speed. But I think, you know, if, if you were going to do this, I would recommend you know, kind of following the steps that I did. Batch painting these is definitely uh, a way forward. So thanks very much for sticking to the end of this video. It's really sort of make or break for Crux Terminatus. If you would like, comment and subscribe, I would love it. Thank you for watching. Cheers now. Bye-bye.